Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to the Business in Africa YouTube channel. And here on this show, we talk about business on the African continent. Because of all the love you guys have been showing me all over Africa, I've decided eh, to give you guys something special. In all my videos, I do takeaways. You know the rules, right? Today, I'll be giving out two of these mocks. I mean, you know the rules. Just spell this word. There will be a 10-letter word that's going to pop up on the screen throughout the video so put that together drop it in the comment section and you stand a chance of going home with this i'll be giving out two of this the first letter word will appear right here it's l i guess and just put it together drop in the comment section and have your own mock right so guys i'll introduce the guest but before i do that don't go away i'll be back after the break Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Business in Africa talk show. I'm right here with somebody in the studio. I told you he's someone who is massive. He's no other but Mr. Mungai Fi. Yes, Mr. <laughs> welcome Rufo. to the studio. Thank you very much, sir. Normally, right, yes. I usually say my first question is usually like, um, introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. But you know what? No. I'm not going to tell you to introduce yourself today mm -hmm. because... Mm -hmm. You are very big. <laughs> <laughs> I was just know that, no, like seriously, this guy is so big. You understand? I want you guys to know who he is. Okay, so I'll just take two seconds of your time mm. and introduce him for you. Okay, <laughs> I'll read his his short biography or CV, just very short. Give me two minutes. Mm. Mr. Mungai Fi is the co-founder of B and M, yeah. a people management company that supports SMEs with tools required to ensure they grow sustainably. That's just the first though. <laughs> he is also the, the co-founder of I Am Cameroon. Cameroon, a movement which seeks to inspire, educate, and engage Cameroonians to accept and assume responsibility for the development of the country. Mungai previously served as Global Policy and Government Relations Director for Africa at Global Citizens in 2020, as Growth and Development Director for Africa and the Middle East at JCI between 2016 and 2019. Okay. He plays board roles in the African Society of Association, Association Executives. Executive. Yeah. And he is a he for she ambassador for the African women for the African women in leadership organization. He is an author having co-authored the book 80 Faces One Voice, in which he assesses the gaps in public leadership and governance in Africa and shares important ideas on how these gaps can be bridged. So, Mr. Mungai Fi, that was a massive CV. What else did I forget? Well, Rufo, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. You forgot the fact that we worked together. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot that we worked at Cameco. Yeah, Cameroon Airlines. Cameroon yes. Airlines. Corporation, actually. Y yes, we, we worked left. together for, I think, four years. Three to four years. Three to four years. And but I left before you, right? Yes, you left. But you, <laughs> you, you opened our eyes to something, Rufo. You opened our eyes to the fact that as young people, we could dream. Right. Because I remember you were the youngest finance director the company had ever Back known. Then. Yes, and... <laughs> and I, man, I, man on struggle, too. Yes, <laughs> and, and I actually remember the night you were appointed finance director we right. went out we went and we right. had, we, we went had out fun. and we shared drinks <laughs> and from the anglophone community in that company it was an eye opener right and i think the following year i also left um and i also had a director a position for an international for organization company, yes yeah so, wow so thank you for that <laughs> no that was massive no no i'm happy i'm happy yeah, to hear that you, that you know but back then you know when i was still working finance director it was a very good position yes. as Yes. At just 31 years old, yes. that was massive. Then. Absolutely. No, see, let me tell you something, right? We we are going to just go directly into what brought us here. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I think you have a very massive CV. You've gone <laughs> around you. Africa. You've yes. seen a lot of things. Yes. You've worked, you've coached, you've trained. Yes. Mungai, tell us. Yes. A lot of SMEs, that's mm -hmm. small and mid-sized companies, yeah. which is your domain, yes. are facing this issue of growth, yes. sustainable growth. Sustainable yes. Growth. Yeah. So, what are the tools? I'll just leave you now. This show is yours now. <laughs> Tell us what are Thank the you. top five tools that they need is, that is required for them to grow in Africa. Thank you, Rufo, and thank you also for having me on your show. You're Welcome. doing a remarkable job. Um, we appreciate what you do for small and medium-sized companies, Welcome. not only in Cameroon, but right. in Africa. Right. We, I personally appreciate your Pan-African vision. It's something I adhere to um, fully. 
in everything I've done, you read I had occupied positions. There, were, there was always either Africa or Africa in the Middle East. Right. And to be specific, I've been to 46 African countries. 46 yes. out of 55. 46. Guys, this is the man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for work and sometimes for pleasure. Yeah. Um, I started business and management consulting, B&M Consulting, with my good friend, uh, Bilok, in 2014. But then we were, I still had a nine to, to five job, so I didn't take it up fully. And I mean, as I speak to you, I equally still have a, a nine to five job, but I'm focusing more on how I expand um, the philosophy of B&M Consulting. Great. So when we started B&M Consulting, it was a small company. We didn't have any client. And we said to ourselves, what were the best ways we could optimize our talents to be right. able to work in such a way that we are visible we can make an impact in companies we are known and our services are top notch our yes. services actually respond to needs that companies and organizations may have and the first thing i'm going to say the first tool for every small and medium sized company ladies and gentlemen is a planning tool planning a planning tool you right. need to plan and when i say plan i mean plan strategically yeah so you need a strategic plan for your business for a minimum of three years and a maximum of five years why that time limit you know the analogy of a baby yes. when we have a newborn baby right um six months we carry him or her uh, uh seven eight months they begin to creep yeah, yeah and growing. between 10 months and 12 months they start walking yes they walk but their feet are not solid yeah. but they walk at least they can carry themselves they can deploy themselves they can move around yeah so one year into your business you're a baby. Two years into your business, you're learning how to run. Three years into your business, you're effectively running. And five years into your business, you're basing on the lessons learned. Right. And it's the fifth year which is very important because it's the fifth year that permits you to strategically boost, to strategically grow. Yes. And if you don't put in place measures that will ensure when you begin to grow, when you begin to expand, that expansion is sustainable you will live to regret it. Wow. I'm going to give you a shocking statistic. Right. Anyway, it depends on who is counting. Cameroon got <laughs> independence. When did Cameroon have independence? 1961. 1960, 1961. 61. For yeah. some people, a bit afterwards. Yeah. But not to get into politics though, but a shocking statistic is that since independence, there's been no company, or if there is, and I'm not sure of, I don't think we have up to five companies that were created in this country since independence that are still operational to date. Right. That's Sp over 50 years. Yes. Specifically created by individuals. Yes. Not government-owned companies, but I mean small businesses, businesses that, have that have grown, grown yeah? and are still operational to Great. date. For most small and medium-sized companies, when the promoter or the founder is no more, it's very difficult for the business to the continue business functioning. Yeah. The business dies. Sometimes I drink beer. Right? <laughs> and my favorite beer is Guinness, for now. <laughs> yes. And each time I pick up a bottle of Guinness, especially the small bottle, I always see a date on it, 1759, when that company was created. So it started as a small business. Yeah. Who can explain to me why Guinness has been there for more than how many centuries? Four yeah. centuries. Yeah. What were they able to do to hand down those strategies, those policies, those ways of the working, formulas. the formulas that have ensured the company stays and is a global company. That was why we created BNM to be able to help small companies grow in a sustainable manner. So you need a strategic plan. That's, That's the first now, thing. Now, just on that, right? Yes. You, you're talking about planning, you know, as the first. Yes. And you talked about five years. Yes. Does that mean a business cannot thrive before it's five years? Of course it can. Mm -hmm. And when I said three years, I remember when I said at three years, you're, you're beginning to run. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. and many, just like some businesses in the space of months are already running. Right. I can give an example, Facebook. Right. In the space of months, Facebook was already a multi-million dollar company. But five years is like, you know, the time <laughs> the you have time to put the planning tool together, together. So that you are able to put, to make your business sustainable. Sustainable. Great. And the trick or the trap is when most businesses, when they start running, they may be trapped in the silo of thinking, ah, now I'm doing well. So I may as well forget about policies and procedures and, and tools and because we are making money. Mm -hmm. It's a big trap. 
it's rather when you're making money that you have to be the most careful in your management. Great. You have to be the most lean. Great. Um, there's this funny advert about a motorbike rider I keep seeing on, on foreign um, television where the motorbike rider, when he's in town with a lot of traffic, he's super careful, mm -hmm. avoiding accidents, avoiding to contact people and things like that. But the moment he leaves traffic, he tells himself, ah, now this is the time for me to run. And the very next second, he has an accident. An accident yeah. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a, 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 an image I'm using to, to bring to the business world. The moment you start making income, the moment you begin to break even, that's actually the word that's I'm supposed the most to use. Social moment. Yes, that is the moment you have to take a step back and say, hey, we are breaking even. It means we can have revenue, we can have savings, we can have a, a fund for future investments. This is the time we have to be very careful with our right. business. Right. This is the time to put in place the lean, the lean methods of, of management, the agile methods of management. So strategic planning is key. Yes. Of course, I, was, I, I would expect you would ask me, but what of, um, if, if your business is run by your passion, if your business is, is, is the, where does the passion fall into it? Right. Your passion is already there. <laughs> Nobody can take your passion away from you. From you right. So your passion is already there. What you need rather is what you would do to ensure that your passion is sustainable and right. that your passion changes lives. Right. So after your strategic plan is in place, you need to put in place what we call a visibility plan. I will not call it a that's, marketing that's plan. Now, that's now tool, tool number two. two. Yeah. You need to put in place a visibility plan. I'm not calling it a marketing plan for the main reason that marketing plan has it's the tendency to derail people. When they hear marketing plan, all they think about is, oh my God, I would need to put in place money. I would need to contact a professional or branding, marketers, branding, etc., etc. Et no. But now you're talking about a visibility. visibility plan is just to make yourself known. If there's anything I've learned from network marketing, there are many places we can draw inspiration from. Number one is network marketing. Yes. What is the principle of network marketing? I talk to as many people as possible. Yeah. That's the principle. What's the principle of social media? I have the possibility to reach hundreds of thousands of people at the globe no time, in less than no time. And people have a reference for if they want to know what I do, they can always bounce back up. Yes. So it's permanently there. What prevents us from talking to people on the streets about our business? Yes. What prevents us from having our social media handles without any promotion, just mm -hmm. constantly having content that is Creating relevant content about your business constantly to just have visibility to just have visibility so for me it's a visibility plan and i think i think munga a lot of small businesses uh, miss this yes in terms of visibility if somebody doing something that's very great mm -hmm. but would never create any content mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. to put it out there so that people just get to know about their business mm -hmm. so this is this is this is this is great Sounds so great. A, a visibility plan now number 3 is not focusing on having people in a location working. If there's one thing COVID, and I'll use my business, b &M, as an example. Mm -hmm. We used to have, when we started, we, we had offices, office premises at uh, Koto here. Yes. And we were paying 200,000 francs a month for our offices. Yeah. I kid you not, in the first six months, we had no business. Right. No business. Like any other normal startup. So, right? <laughs> when we had our first client, guess what we were earning from our first client a month for our services? 200,000 francs. That could not be paid. So, months. just what we were receiving as income was taking care, was supposed to go for mortgage. Yeah. So, when the pandemic came and with all of this working from home and staying at home and social distancing, I remember my partner and I, we, we took some time off. We went to Limbe. We took some time off. We said, let's go to Limbe and just, just change our, our scenario, change right. our setting. Right. We spent the full day in Limbe, Rufo, just thinking. Just thinking. So the third tool, things. yes. <laughs> the third tool is, ladies and gentlemen, business promoters, take time off to think. Just to think about your business. You right. could do it alone, you could do it with someone, or you could do it with your partners. But just take time off to think from where you started, where you are, and where you intend to go. Yes. So we took time off to think, and we said, but guys, do you know what? We really don't need an office. We really don't need to be paying mortgage. We really don't need to put equipment in the office, connect internet, uh, pay electricity, utilities. We really don't need that. We can work from our homes. Great. 
If we do need to meet clients, we have two options. We go to their offices or we meet at public places like cafes and lounges, etc. Uh, we decided to stop working in the office, yeah. saved some money on mortgage, used 30,000 francs a month. Uh, without publicity, you me, yes. internet, 60 yeah. or 70 gig you see? for work. You so when of 200,000 francs we were paying for mortgage, see what we gained. We were able to give our three partners 10,000 francs monthly airtime for, 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 for internet. internet. We were able to, so that's 30,000. We were able to provide uh, uh, 5,000 francs for utilities as support because right. you're using your, your, your equipment yeah, at home. At home yeah. Of course, we had sacrificed and bought our laptops and everything like that. Right. And then, guess what? With 100,000 francs, we were actually able to engage on work for our website. Man, this is... When, when you talk about that, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be clear here. I always preach this, right? Yes. That you can just start from home. can just start. I mean, look at how much you guys were able to, to save. To do just, just by saving... From home. Yes, and just by saving 200,000 francs in a month. And you see a lot of people out there saying that, I don't have money to go rent a big office. You must not rent a big, big office. office. I always say this. I like this point. Plus, if you rent a big office, you then have to pay for publicity tax and all those other so taxes other which you avoid it, right? when you don't have a, right. a security and all of that. So yeah. we, 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 we eliminated all of that. So point number three, go lean in your management, work from home if you can, and uh, uh, build on that. The time will come where you would build a mansion if right. you believe in yourself and you know that what you're proposing right. is, is, is going to make sense. Number four, um, it's simple. To make your business grow, you have to start by putting in place procedures from the beginning of your operation. Right. Don't wait to, like we say locally, don't wait to blow before you implement procedures. Have your management procedures, your finance procedures, your operating, operating procedures. procedures, have all of those procedures Safety in procedures. place. Safety procedures, yeah. your board procedures, so the members of your board, how your board relations and everything. It's work in progress. I'm not saying you should have all of those at Before once. You start, yeah. But do not lose sight of those procedures. Exactly. Do not lose sight of those procedures. I'll give you an example. When we took our retreat and we thought about our business, the first thing we, we did when we came back was to put in place our board procedures. The three of us who put in place our board procedures. The three of us became the ipso facto board members. But then, because we had agreed and signed a binding document that we were going to follow these procedures, it required of us monthly contributions as board members to the business. You get. So that already puts, puts in place some kind of discipline in place. And it puts in place some kind of revenue generation. To make the company sustainable. Continue to grow. Yeah. So we, we reinvested in our own company. Right. I think the only thing I have ever, uh, uh, and I hope my memory is correct, but the only thing I've ever done out of my business in terms of expenditure was when we had a client and we were so happy we had had a major client. We went out, we had drinks, and we put on the bill of the company. That yeah, was, that was but every other money income we make, we reinvest in, in the company. To such an extent, after having done that for about eight months, we were now in the position to hire someone to come and serve us manager junior manager for the company, company yeah. so that's strategy number four yeah. strategy number five which i kept for last but which is the most important is the african employment market is massive if you have a registered business go for interns the oh, law permits it at the beginning yes the law permits it. You can have professional interns. So people are about to leave school mm -hmm. who are looking for three to four months professional internships mm -hmm. to be able to either complete the requirements for their degree mm -hmm. or get into the job market. It's permitted by law. Internships. Right. You can have academic interns. You can have professional right. interns. Go for interns. Make use of this workforce which is graduating every year in our universities and need to be employed. In Cameroon, we send over, uh, I don't know if you know the statistic, but in Cameroon, we send over 100,000 of graduates every year. Right. In Africa, it's 1.5 million, if my memory is correct. Right. The small and medium-sized companies in Africa account for $2 trillion. Right. 200 million SMEs need loans or overdrafts every month. Can you understand the gap? Yeah. And so, 
we would not bridge this gap by constantly saying, no, we need to get financing for SMEs. SMEs too have to take care of themselves. Right. So, and so in the posture where you don't have resources to be able to recruit and pay personnel yes, yes. Or, your, or your people, put up uh, 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 internship ads. Put up call for for but, calls but for Mugai, people to come and serve you short, on a not yes. Short, Mugai. Mm -hmm. um, talking about interns, interns. Uh, I mean, it, when when interns come, right? Yes. You know, you need to train them. Yes. So um, you still need people. Yes. Who are professionals to train the smaller ones, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So how so does that I would work? I would I would and that was where I was going to <laughs> right. because all of what I'm telling you are the things I have done for B and M Consulting, which are working. And this is working. Yes. So when we launched our internship program, do you know how we branded it? No. Junior Consultants Training Program. Okay. Junior Consultants Professional Program. And we recruited six university students whom we told them we were going to train them on how to be consultants, how to be consultants in whatever they do. Yeah. The, the art of consulting. Yeah. Because it's equally an art to be able to consult, right, right. identify your client's problem, and provide a solution. So that was how we got people working for us um, for about six months, doing different things we were assigning them to do. And also empowering them. And also empowering them. Great. I remember on many nights in... In, in our office here in Koto, we, when we finish, we will put up a projector, have them sit, and we keep giving them techniques, training. tools, tactics. And at the end, we gave them certificates of completion of training of the Junior uh, Consultants Program. Wow. So those are the five uh, wow. tools I've thought about. Wow, 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 wow. I've just been here learning, guys. <laughs> like, seriously, I, I'm just enjoying everything. I mean, every <laughs> word that came out from his mouth just... Went in. So I, I hope you guys are taking notes. Um, you remember at the beginning of the show, I told you guys to take your pen and paper, right? Because this was going to be some kind of a training class. Mungai here is somebody who has, you know, traveled a lot in Africa. He just told us <laughs> he's been to 46 Six, different yeah. African countries. Yeah. So he knows the African continent, guys. <laughs> I hope. So if you want any kind of, you know, consultancy in business management and people management, just contact the numbers on the screen. Be an, be an yeah. M management is there. Yeah. Be an M consultancy yeah. company is, is there. there. They yeah. work not only in Cameroon for yes. all over Africa, right? Yes. Yes. So contact the numbers. The numbers are on the screen right now and you're going to get it. Mm. Now, they're already signaling us that it's almost above time. Yes. But there is this question that I must ask. There's Please. no way you're going to leave this. this. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to leave this studio without me asking this. Yes, sir. You know, you've, you've traveled all this, you know, all, all, over, the, all, all over Africa. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to invest in Africa, I just want oh, you yeah. to tell me yeah. which three countries would you advise uh, that to invest in? Top three top countries three to invest in. <laughs> you, and you always like putting numbers in, yes, in everything I, I like you it, do. I, I like it that way. And it, it's, it's true. It, it enables us to re retain. Yes. Top five growth tools we yes, need to be yes, sustainable. Yes. Top three investment countries. Okay. Um, there are traditional countries. I'm going to segment them. I'm, I'll give you three, three of three different segments. Okay. And then I'll give you three localities in Cameroon where you have to invest in as well. Right. <laughs> so the first segment is the regular countries: Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt. Those are the regular countries in Africa. Nigeria, for India, South, South Africa, Africa and Egypt. Egypt. Nigeria number one economy. South Africa number two economy. Egypt breaking into the top three economies in Africa. Right. Stable countries. Of course, we may have a, f a few fears in South Africa because of all what's going there on there locally, but South Africa remains a business destination for whoever. I've had the opportunity of being there about four or five times. Yes. All companies you can think of in the world are in South Africa. Right. Their business is booming. Nigeria, the number one factor is population growth. So a local... Over 200 million. Exactly, a local market. That's why most Nigerians don't rely or work for the government. Yeah, they yeah. create and they do their own things. Number three is Egypt. Egypt is a very stable country since they were able to go to or transition politically. They have yes. become a very stable country. Yeah. I don't know if you hear anything about Egypt again in the news no, like no, no, before. No, no, no. So they've become a very stable country and they're attracting a lot of investors. But Plus, you're in Rwanda. I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> Plus, we have the Suez Canal in Egypt, which generates a lot of money for the country right. because that's the only uh, connecting... Uh, uh, pathway between the, the the Mediterranean and the Pacific Ocean. Ocean yes. And when we say Pacific, you know what we are talking about, right. the oil-rich countries. So that's giving them a lot of Got money. It. 
So the, the country, the next three are countries that are trying to break through, yes. break into this top category, right? right? And I'll start with Rwanda. I see uh, you are itchy, <laughs> you are itchy for Rwanda, and, yeah, I'll, Rwanda and I'll start is with like and I'll, top rising. Yes, I'll start with Rwanda. As small as Rwanda is, I've been to Kigali. As small as it is, as clean as it is, as environmentally friendly as it is, Rwanda used or had a secret they used to be able to attract investments and business. Right. Tourism. Right. They went out of their way to make their country attractive to tourists. And then when tourists kept coming, the mindset was like, okay, yes, we come here to see the country, see how beautiful it is, but what can we, we do? do? And that's where the business ideas came now from. Start selling I don't, I don't, I, I know you're, you're a football fan, um, um, uh, Rufo. Yeah. Did you know that the government of Rwanda paid over 21 million euros in the space of three years for Arsenal, in the, the Arsenal team in London, to brand Rwanda. Wow. So right. when you see a government make that kind of investment to attract people to their country, you know that there is something serious going right. on there. So hey, Rwanda is definitely in. And then I'll mention Kenya, yeah. which is now stable. Mm -hmm. When each time Kenya enjoys political stability, people Business go and boom. invest. Because Kenya's, Kenya and Ethiopia actually are linking countries between Africa and the Middle East. Yes because of their airports, their hubs, their airlines. Yes. So those are linking countries. And the secret is clear. Whoever has a performing airline attracts investment. Yeah, it's, 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 airlines, yes, right? we, we have the experience <laughs> of airlines. Whichever country has a performing airline attracts investors. So those are the, the next tier countries. And then um, I'll end with Cameroon, the three areas in Cameroon <laughs> where if you're a young Cameroonian, you want to set up a small business, right. whatever that business is, these are the three areas you have to try to set that business up in. Bonamusadi area. So Bonamusadi, Koto, Makepe, Lopom, those neighborhoods. This is the booming area in Douala right no. now. Yeah. Don't miss out. The least idea you have, even if it's making fruit juice, set it up in this area, you would sell. It's a booming area. Right. Number two, the northwest region of Cameroon. And number three, the North southwest West. region of Cameroon. With all what's happening. Yes, I, I say that for a reason. <laughs> the northwest region of Cameroon and the southwest region of Cameroon. I am preempting, so I'm giving people the possibility to project. I am a firm believer that our insecurity will not be forever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I am equally a firm believer that very soon they would need people to help rebuild these this, two yeah, regions. Right. We have to be ready. Right. So whatever you do, Prepare yourself to actually go and invest in these areas. Yes. Plus, the government has provided a tax exoneration for any business which is set up in the northwest and the right. southwest region. Right. So yeah. also be watchful about in initiatives in our country that favor business. Right. So those are my three areas in Cameroon. In Cameroon. But let me say, <laughs> you, you, have, you, have really given, you have really given some insight and added this one for yes. Cameroonians, yes. And which, is, which is quite good. But as I said... I know you've given the top tier, yeah, company, yeah. the top tier countries mm -hmm. or the normal countries yeah. an uprising. Yeah. But let me say this, Mungai. If someone just comes to you and say, "Hey, which countries? Give me, give me the names of three countries that I want that I want to that I can invest in, right? Mm -hmm. That you can advise me to invest in as an investor. Which are the countries I go? Just name it: one, two, three. Nigeria, Rwanda, and Mauritius Islands. Nigeria, Rwanda, Rwanda and Mauritius, Mauritius Islands. Island. So west, east, south. Mauritius Island simply because it's a tax haven. Right. Businesses do not pay taxes in Mauritius Island. Yes. That's a simple reason. But you didn't mention that in your... Well, yes, I, I, I kind of... <laughs> I, kind of yeah. I, I think I missed it when I had... Because I think I had a part where I had to speak, speak about, about the rising Mauritius countries and Mauritius, Mauritius Islands. Yes, but... So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mungai fee <laughs> for you. This guy, as I told you, right, I'm sure I was learning all through. <laughs> <laughs> I will come to the end of our first slots on the Business in Africa talk show. Remember, I always say this, you know, being serious without a small, without play a bit is not good, right? So we're going to be moving to the second section of the slot of the show, or second slot of the show, which is Discover Africa, where we are going to be asking Munga here 10 questions. Ten. Fact, she, she will be the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ten. Sorry. He will be the one to pick the questions and I'll read them out. Let's see if he... I know Africa that Africa well. <laughs> so don't move a muscle and I hope you've been like picking up the letters that's been popping up, right? 
so you can drop it in the comment section below and get one of the giveaway mugs for this particular video. Don't move a muscle, we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the show, guys. I'm still here with Mr. Mungaifi, and in this section or in this slot of the show, we shall be asking Mungai here 10 different questions about Africa, not related to business, okay? <laughs> and he is going to respond to them, and we go, we are going to find out if he knows the continent, the way he says it. <laughs> so are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I think I now, am. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is the box, the yes. question bank. Yes. So just pick it out, and I'll read it out. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Question number one reads, and dun, I read, dun, dun, how many different languages are spoken across Africa? Oh, boy, that's... About enough. 30. A. B. About 300. C. About 3,000. And D. About 5,000. I would say C. About 3,000. Ladies and gentlemen... That was the correct <laughs> About 3,000 languages. Yes, I know we have, we have, we have, we have died. Question number two. Let's go. Yes. Here we go. Okay. Now, the co founder is co founder, right? Yes. Co founder yes. of B yeah, and M. M. Yes, sir. Which of the following separates Africa from Europe? Mm -hmm. A. Suez Canal. Yes. B. Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. C. It's Moot of Suez. Mm -hmm. D. Sinai Peninsula. Uh, I think it's B, the Mediterranean Sea. And that was the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Two correct answers, no wrong answer. Question number three. There we go. Wow, this guy knows. <laughs> it's fact. just, it's just <laughs> two. You don't, you don't travel. Eight are left. <laughs> In which country is Africa's highest mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro, located? That's tricky. Tanzania. But many people think it's Kenya. Yeah, but the answer is Tanzania. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, it's Tanzania. Many people think it's Tanzania. Yes, it's in Tanzania. Yes. All right. Tanzania, right. Yes, in All right. The, the, the options were Tanzania, Kenya, Egypt, and Ethiopia. But yeah, of course, Tanzania. Man, three right answers. <laughs> Question number four. Yes. Question number four reads: Which of the following countries is also known as the Rainbow Nation? Okay. A. South Africa. B, Tanzania. C, mm -hmm. Nigeria. D, Zambia. South Africa. And that was the correct <laughs> answer. Question number five. Yes. You know, I'll get to you. If I have everything, zero. I'm leaving with two months. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following countries is completely surrounded by, Af by South Africa? Lesotho. Right. <laughs> correct answer again. Question number six. 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 An African country, Sudan, has been broken into two recently with formation of a new country named South Sudan. Yes. The economy of South Sudan depends on A, agricultural products, C, B, minerals, C, forest products, and D, fishery. <sighs> what was the cause of the war? A, agricultural products, B, minerals, C, forest products, D, fishery products. I'm tempted to say uh, B, minerals. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mugai Fee here just got that <laughs> answer so wrong. Wrong. Because <laughs> they were in a war for long, so it's only minerals no, that can cause it. the answer is A, agriculture. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we're on question number seven. I've never been to Sudan, though. <laughs> Tugela Falls, which is the second highest waterfall in the world, lies in which country in Africa? Mm -hmm. A, Algeria. B, South Africa. C, Sudan. And D, Tunisia. Um, A, Algeria. And that was the wrong answer. <laughs> Together Falls is in South Africa. Okay. Two wrong answers, five right, right answers. <laughs> Question number eight. At least I already have the average. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So no more pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Which country is the largest in area in the African continent? A, South Africa, B, Egypt, C, Algeria, D, Angola. Hmm. Which country is the largest in area in the continent of Africa? Algeria? Is that your answer? I mean, it, 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 should, be, it should be between <laughs> Algeria and Angola. Is so. that your answer? <laughs> choose <What's> choose your... <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm not the one to choose yeah. there. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with uh, Algeria. I'll stay with Algeria. 
And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this way. Mr. Munga <laughs> here just had that answer wrong. correct. Oh, yeah, Algeria. <laughs> the largest country is Algeria. Yeah. Six correct answers, two Ooh, wrong answers. No pressure. Question number nine. No. That's good. This guy is so... I told you <laughs> this guy is tough, right? <laughs> South African cricket players are called Proteas. Protea means... A, national animal of South Africa. Mm -hmm. B, national bird of South Africa. Mm -hmm. C, national flower of South Africa. And D, national language of South Africa. Wait, can I have the options again? National? South African cricket players are called proteas. proteas yeah. The protea is, or protea means, mm -hmm. A, the national animal of South Africa. Mm -hmm. B, the national bird of South Africa. Mm -hmm. C, national flower of South Africa. And Z, the national language of South Africa. Ah, I really don't know, but I'll say A. That was the wrong answer. <laughs> I mean, this, I didn't expect you to get this. Yeah. The national flower of South Africa. National flower? Flower, Why? Yeah. Protea. Yeah, because the national animal is the springbok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been to South Africa, so you know these things. So, I would uh, never have had it right. Which is, I think, is the last this one. This is the last question of the day. The last me, question, me, the last question. Let's let me see. score 70%. I yeah, guess. you have six right answers. <laughs> yes, and three, three wrong. wrong answers. Let's see what Mr. Mungai comes up with. with this, one. <laughs> this is very simple, right? I hope so. <laughs> question number 10, reads. <laughs> Cameroon won the African Nations Cup for the fourth time in 2002, equaling the record of two other nations. Yes. Which two African nations had previously won the African Nations Cup four times? Mm -hmm. A, Morocco and Nigeria. Mm -hmm. B, Egypt and Ghana. Mm -hmm. C, Ghana, Morocco. Mm -hmm. And D, Ghana, Nigeria. It's uh, B, Egypt and Ghana. And that was the correct answer. I mean, for a Cameroonian who does not know that then. <laughs> yes. Seven right oh, answers, three, three wrong, wrong answers. This yeah. just goes to show that. I tried. Mr. Mugaya is Thank you. African. Thank you. <laughs> he knows Thank the you. continent. That was so fun, guys, actually. That was fun. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was fun, right? Mm. So I don't know. I mean, you've been following this show. How how much did you score? What, what was your score, right? <laughs> Drop in the comment section below. Let us know if you as well know Africa or not. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be going now to the last section or the last slot of the show. Don't move a muscle, don't go anywhere, keep watching. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Business in Africa talk show. I'm still here with Mungai Mfi. Yes. And the truth about or the truth of the matter is that he is someone who's giving us so much, okay? <laughs> And in this part of I the slot, I just ask people to tell Africa something, guy. <laughs> look at the camera, look straight at the camera, and say something to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rufo. It's been an, a really engaging and exciting program. Congratulations again for what you do. Thank you. I'll say this. I've always had the chance, and people have always asked me to say something motivating or inspiring or things around us uh, that nature. And I always say the same thing. Wherever you are, stand up. Look in front of you, look behind you, look to your left, look to your right. If you're in, surrounded by four walls, try to look outside your window. If you're satisfied with what you see, you need no motivation. If you're not satisfied with what you see, if you're not happy with what you see, then get up and do something about it. Thank you. Right. That was short and straight to the point, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, put it up for Mungain Fee. <laughs> so straight, so concise, and so motivating. Thank, Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. You. And as you know, before you go, right, there's <laughs> yes. no way you're going to go without signing the African board. Absolutely. And the African board, Mungai, as you see here, is for people <coughs> who are changing the African narrative mm -hmm. and people who are rewriting the African script. Yes. So you are part of them. And mm -hmm. I think you're going to choose any country. An area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are, this are for the people who have like been on the show. Yes. And yes. so you choose any other loose country yes. and you're going to sign on it. Okay. All right. So I have the honor for Thank Mungai you. Fee to put his signature on the board. Yes. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to put my signature over Mali. Mali. Yes. 
Okay. Somewhere, Somewhere around here. here. Then I just write C signature. I oh boy. B and M. Exactly. So guys, you can see there, that's the signature of, you know, the people who are making Thank it. You. The Thank people you. who are making it on the African <laughs> continent, who are changing the African narrative, who are actually rewriting the African script. Mm. So what else can I say? Thank you so much for coming. Thank I mean, you. You brought something for, for me, Mungani. Yes, I did. And thank you for, for bringing that up. <laughs> um, I have this uh, gift for you, Rufo. Right. Um, in, this is just a testament. Yay. This is, first of all, to say thank you for all you do. Um, oh. This is a book about leadership. Right. And if there's one thing, if there's one skill that is lacking in the African continent is leadership yeah. skills. True. I'm not talking about government or politicians. So I'm just saying leadership skills wherever you are, whatever position you occupy, right. we need leaders in all sectors of society to be able to elevate the continent. Yes. Um, this book was written by one of my mentors, Ariel Benson, okay. um, who, with whom I had the chance to work. He's Cameroonian, yes. but he's based in the USA. And this book collects concepts of his 20-year plus leadership of a global organization called Junior Chamber International, where he served as Secretary General for many, many years. Yeah. So, Ari's book, right, collects all his lessons, theories, and stories of Over 20, 20 years. years of leading a global wow. organization. Wow. So, I am pretty sure this book would inspire you a lot. Wow. And wow. would give you the foundations you need to be able to lead your organization properly. Thank you. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, uh, Mungai Fi. You're welcome. Ariel Benson, if you're watching this, thank you. I'm sure um, I've never had the opportunity to meet him, but yeah. I'm sure this is going to be a good read. Mm -hmm. And I also like to say that all of you out there, if you're doing anything that has to do with leadership, any business, you're an entrepreneur, then probably you must Ab read this book as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So how do we get this? Can we? Oh, can we yes. My own copy, but how, yes, how yes. Copy? That's for you and yeah. for your, your team. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can contact me if you want more copies. Um, right. We are selling a copy at 15,000 francs. 15,000 francs, yes. yeah. yeah. So the numbers on the screen, guys, if you want your own copy, just call the numbers on the screen and you are going to have yours. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm thank so you. happy. I'm going to read this book. I'm a reader, right? I yes. read every day. So yes. I'm going to read this book and come back to you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We've come to the end of this episode of the show. And I hope, right, that you learned something from my guests today on this particular episode of the show about the top five most sustainable growth tools that you need as a business in Africa. If you didn't learn much, then just come back. Munga is always here. He is ready to answer all your questions. You can drop your questions in the comment section below, and I'm sure he will see it, and he's going to respond to you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. If you need any consultancy in Africa, hey, this is the right place to go. Call the numbers. They're on the screen, and you are going to you know, have him talk with you, okay? So what else can I say? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been taking note of the quotes that's been coming up on screen. Drop it in the comment section below and stand a chance, you know, of going home with some of this, okay? Some of the, the business in Africa mugs. So what else can I say? Mungai. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. And my thanks to your production team. Right. Thank See you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>